it's all a part of wanting to know about biology. And uh, so all of this allows us to see what nature has been, what it's going, and where it's going. So if we don't know what was natural in the beginning, if we don't have records of this, what if we don't know what it looked like. Your baseline. You know, we have no you baseline data baseline. to go from. So this is what we're doing right now, what you might consider the baseline data for the 21st century. Some people will say, why don't you just throw all this junk away? It's no good. We don't know that it is or is not significant, but it's good to know that it exists mm -hmm. so that at some point, uh, if we need that knowledge, then we can use it. These <laughs> of the spider collections. I am David Grant and I am an emeritus professor of biology from Davidson College, but I've worked mostly with spiders and making collections of the local fauna here. There are seven of us who are curators over there in a natural history museum. There are two who work with mushrooms. There is one who works with snails there are two who work with insects. It was a Sunday edition, and the front of the observer, above the pole, was a big picture of the seven of us that are identifying things over there. And it says, museum curators, an endangered species, and we are, because no one can afford to be trained to do this nowadays. The schools can't maintain the faculties to do it. Barium was founded in the 60s by uh, Dr. Jim Matthews. We have now about 45,000 specimens, and of those, about 10,000 are from the former Daggy collection at Davidson College. Dr. Daggy was the last person that I knew that I would consider a biologist. He came to Davidson in 1948, and he knew more about things outside his field than most people do in those fields. And he taught virtually everything in the curriculum of biology. I don't know how many plants he has there, but his, he was not a botanist. He, he was the entomologist to start with, but you can't study insects without knowing all the plants that they can be found on. I have a row of plants here um, that are of species that Dr. Daggy collected in the area that was going to be flooded that we no longer know to occur in Mecklenburg County. So to our knowledge, and we have been out and searched in similar habitats. We have not found these species again in the county. The area under Lake Norman was generally pretty typical for Mecklenburg County. What is a little bit different about it would be the area right along the Catawba River itself and the fact that there were some rocky bluffs. The rocky bluffs are the part of the habitat that is really significant. That's a, a type of habitat that is not very common in Mecklenburg County at all. And that is in fact where Dr. Daggy spent the majority of his time collecting. You can see by some of his specimens, this is the only um, collection we've ever had of this particular fern, the Cystopterus. And he collected many, 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 um, all of these are his collections. And he collected it, I'm sure, because he knew it was rare um, and, and would be gone. So he collected um, many duplicates of it. Let's see, um, 1955, you can see he returned in 58, 59. That's exactly um, just before the impoundment was being completed. With the ferns that grow in the rock crevices on the bluffs, that's um, Restoring a habitat like that would be nearly impossible. <laughs>